Hello everyone, this is Simple Math for you. And uh, our lesson today is about symmetry. Many students were asking for this lesson and I am recording this lesson upon their request. أهلا بكم في درسكم التناظر واليوم سنتكلم عن نوعين من أنواع التناظر. We will talk about two types of symmetry. Line symmetry and rotational symmetry. A figure has symmetry if there exists a rigid motion, reflection, translation, rotation, or glide reflection that maps the figure onto itself. So that means the shape will stay the same. It has symmetry if you consider that it will be the same if you reflect it about itself, if you move it about itself. So the figure in the plane has for example, line symmetry or reflectional symmetry of if each half of the figure matches the other side exactly. For example, here we will imagine that this was the total, the whole shape. This was the whole shape. So this whole shape, this whole shape has been as if it's cut here somewhere so that if you fold it, fold it the twee about this line, it will be compatible. It will be copy paste of each other. Both sides, both images will compact, will be exactly the same. Uh, let's uh, identify line symmetry so that uh, the, the idea uh, becomes uh, more clear for uh, all of you. For example, determine whether each figure has line of symmetry. If so, draw the lines of symmetry. As you see here, this shape is what? One, two, three, four four, five, it is pentagonal, and we will consider that it's regular pentagonal. Regular pentagonal means a polygon with five congruent sides and five congruent angles. So as you see here, these lines drawn are called lines of symmetry. Why? This line cuts the shape into exactly two congruent parts. Let's see. This is exactly copy of that one. If you cut it using scissor, you will find that they are exactly the same. Not only one. We have here one, two, three, four, and five. Five lines. Each of them cuts the shape into congruent parts. That means we have here five lines of symmetry. Here, as you see, if you put the line anywhere, you will not find two congruent parts. Actually, it's difficult and it's very easy to recognize that it has lean zero lines of symmetry. You cannot have any line that cuts this shape into two congruent parts. Let's uh, take some exercises here. Determine whether each figure has line of symmetry. If so, copy the figure and draw the lines of symmetry and state how many lines of symmetry it has. Now, let's see the first one. It looks like a rectangle. And as you see here, if you pass a line here exactly midway between uh, these, the, the mid, at the midpoint here, you, you can see that this and that part are exactly congruent. So we have here one line of symmetry. Is there another one? Yes, we, we can also cut this shape you can cut the rectangle into exactly mid here if i'm accurate here somewhere here so this is another line of symmetry that means we have two lines of symmetry okay let's see this one assuming that this is an equilateral triangle a regular triangle yani equilateral all sides are congruent does it have lines of symmetry yes we can realize that this line cuts from here, from the vertex, exactly at the midpoint here. This is one of the lines of symmetry. This is line of symmetry. This is line of symmetry. And they are meeting all at a point here, which is the centroid. And we have here three lines of symmetry. If you analyze one of the lines, let's take this line. It cuts the triangle into two congruent triangles. This is one of them. And this is the other one. Okay. Here, this is like a trapezoid, and uh, as you see here, if you try to find any line of symmetry, you will not be able to. So we have zero lines of symmetry. Let's do some more practice here. 
Determine whether each figure has line of symmetry. If so, draw the lines of symmetry and state how many lines of symmetry it has. As, as we just said now, if this triangle is not equilateral, if not all the sides are congruent, then you cannot have line of symmetry unless it is isosceles. For example, if it's isosceles, we have one line of symmetry. Only one can cut. But if it's equilateral, as we just mentioned, we have three lines of symmetry. So if you assume that it's equilateral triangle, yes. Okay, what about this shape? This shape, as you see here, we can cut it from here. So this is one line of symmetry and we can have two congruent parts. Also, if you cut it from the middle here, we will have this part is congruent to this part. So that means we have two lines of symmetry. This one has zero line of, lines of symmetry. For this one, it's complicated, actually, it's confusing for many students. They think that uh, it's like rectangle. Actually, if you put a line like that and you fold this shape, you can try it at home even, you will not see that uh, uh, the shapes are congruent to each other. Yani this one, this part is not mirror image of the other. Also here, even if you pass a line here, if you fold the shape, we had a shakil behind jiha. This one will be here, and this one will be there. It will not be congruent to the other part. It will not be mirror image of the other part. So there is no line of symmetry here. Now this is a pentagon, and in the pentagon we just mentioned also that it has five lines of symmetry, and you can draw them. This is one. This is two. Exactly at the middle. From this vertex here, three. From this vertex directly here, four. And from the vertex, this vertex here, cutting at the middle, five. So we have five lines of symmetry. For this one, as you see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is octagon with eight sides, polygon with eight sides. And if you uh, uh, analyze uh, this shape, you will have how many? Think about it. It will have eight lines of symmetry, eight lines of symmetry. I have drawn some of them in brown, actually, and we missed some as well. We can draw another one. Where can we draw the next? This is one. Let me uh, count them here. This is one, two, three. Four. This one is the same as that one, the five. So where are the other four? The other four are, let me draw them for you. So this will be one from vertex to vertex. And this is another one. Two. And this is another one. Three. And this is another one. Four. So four red, four brown. And these are the lines of symmetry. We have eight lines of symmetry. Well, uh, lines of symmetry are easy, as you have seen here. So we will move to the other uh, uh, type of symmetry, which is called rotational symmetry. From the word rotational, dawaran, that means if you rotate the shape, it will come back to the original shape. It will come back to the original position. So a figure in the plane has rotational symmetry or radial symmetry if the figure can be mapped onto itself by being rotated less than 360. Why less than 360? Because any shape, irrespective of the shape, if you rotate it 360 degrees, it becomes, it will come back to the same shape. It will come back to the original position. So this figure uh, has rotational symmetry because the rotation of 90, 180, or 270 maps the figure uh, onto itself. If you rotate this uh, 90 degrees or 180 degrees or 270 or uh, 360, of course, so it will come back. So that means it has rotational symmetry. The point in which the figure can be rotated onto itself is called center of symmetry. The number of times that the figure maps onto itself as it rotates from three, uh, 0 to 360 is called the order of symmetry. It means if you can rotate it three times, two times before the 360, it has an order of two. If you, if you can rotate it four times before, before it comes back to its original position after 360, 
means a full rotation, that means the order will be four. The order and the magnitude of rotation are related by the following equation. The magnitude is 360 divided by the order. Or you can say the order is the, mag the uh, 360 divided by the magnitude. So the magnitude is the angle of rotation, 90 degrees, 60 degrees, 120 degrees. This is how we deal with that. So the figure that we were talking about has order of four. Why four? Because you can rotate the shape four times before uh, until 360 degrees when it comes back to the original position. So since it has been rotated four times, that means the magnitude is 360 divided by four, which is 90. Now let's uh, check here. This is some, uh, there are some solved example as you can see here. Determine whether each figure has rotational symmetry. Explain. Of course here, if, if you try to rotate the shape here, 180 degrees, 90 degrees, 270 degrees, it will not come back to the original position unless it's rotated 360 degrees, full rotation. That means no rotation has been done here. So no rotational symmetry. While here you can rotate one it come back to the it comes back to the original position also another one two it will come back to the original position so if you see here this is symmetrical shape so the flower can map onto itself if you rotate it many times before it reaches to the original position as you see here you can one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can rotate it eight times. So you can add here that the order of rotation is eight. You can rotate it eight times before it comes back to the original position uh, after a full rotation. So yes, it has. If you are asked to find the magnitude here, magnitude, then the magnitude is 360 over eight, which is, 41 degrees. Okay, well done. And then uh, here for uh, this clover can map to itself four times. It's very clear that uh, this has four times uh, rotation. Um, can it can has uh, or it can have order equals to four. So the magnitude is 360 over four, which is 90 degrees. And it's very clear. Every 90 degrees, it comes back to the original position. Let's see here the orange here, the slice. Uh, as you see here, uh, it's here can be shown here that it is uh, cut into, it's like the pizza, it is uh, cut into eight congruent uh, parts. So after eight rotation, every rotation can uh, return back this shape to the original position. So yes, it has a rotational uh, symmetry and the magnet, the order, let's say, order of symmetry is eight, and the magnitude is 360 over eight, which is 450 degrees. While here, the scissor, it's very clear that it has no rotational symmetry. Let's look at the rectangle here. Uh, the rectangle here can come back to the original position when in, it rotates 180 degrees. And if you, if you turn this rectangle, 180 degrees, it becomes, uh, first, for example, 90, it becomes like this. But another 180, if another 90 means at 180, it will come back here. So if this is one and this is two side, this will be side one and this side two. And when you rotate it back to 360, it will go back to the original position. That means the order here of the rectangle is two, order of symmetry is two, and the magnitude is 360 over two, which is 180 degrees. Means each 180 degrees, it will come back to the original position. State the order of magnitude of symmetry. Determine whether each figure has rotational symmetry. If so, locate the center of symmetry and state the order and the magnitude of symmetry. This is one of the polygons, which is pentagon. We are familiar now with the polygon. And it's very clear that the order is five because if you rotate it five times before the 360, then uh, it, is, it is coming back to the original position. The magnitude is, uh, root, is found by dividing 360 over five, which is 72. Here, it's very clear that it has no rotational symmetry, so we cannot find the order. 
nor the magnitude. In the parallelogram, yes, it has rotation symmetry. Remember, in the line symmetry, it doesn't have line symmetry, but now it has rotational symmetry similar to the rectangle after two rotations before the 180. So the order is two and magnitude is 180, which is 360 divided by two, which is 180 degrees. Now, uh, does it have anyone does have a point of symmetry? Yes, this one has point of symmetry uh, because uh, it is rotated uh, here uh, five times. And this one also has a point of symmetry. This is the point of symmetry. This has a point of uh, symmetry. So it can be rotated a uh, certain angle uh, after uh, before, I mean, 360 degrees. Let's check here. This is a good exercise that uh, explains some missing points as well. Now, first uh, exercise A, it's a rectangle. Does it have? It's similar to the parallelogram. Yes, the order is two. We can rotate it 180 every 180 degrees. So we have here 180. You can do it mentally or you can say 360 over two, which is 180 degrees. You can realize that here. It doesn't have any rotational symmetry here. No rotational symmetry. It will, if you rotate it 90 degrees or 180 degrees or 270, it will not come back to the original position. And for example, for this exercise, it will be like this after 180 degrees, something like that. So it's not the original shape, as you see. So it has no rotational symmetry, order none, and magnitude none. For this equilateral triangle, Remember, in the line symmetry, it has three lines of symmetry. And the nice thing here, yes, it has rotational symmetry. And the order is also three here. Because if you rotate the triangle, the triangle here, uh, 120 degrees, it will come back to the original position, the original triangle. So it is 360 over three, which is 120 degrees. Three uh, order of symmetry is three. Uh, we, we can observe these following points. Do all regular polygons have rotational symmetry? Regular polygons, regular, yani all sides are congruent? Yes, they do. Because there exists an angle through which you can rotate regular polygon into itself. That means if you have equilateral triangle, uh, regular pentagon, regular hexagon, regular uh, octagon, they will have rotational symmetry. Okay. So, so do they have point of symmetry, regular polygons? If they have odd number of sides, so they will not have point of symmetry. Yani pentagon, مثلاً, no. Heptagon with seven uh, sides, no. But X hexagon, octagon, yes. So regular polygons with odd numbers of sides cannot map with rotation of 180. That means the point of symmetry will happen only if you have 180 degrees here. So that means here we have done a mistake. This, If this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so this is not a point of symmetry. So we cannot say that it has rotational symmetry. It has rotational symmetry, but not point of symmetry. What will the order of symmetry of a regular n polygon? n means if it is pentagon, pentagon, yeah, four, five sides, the order will be five. Hexagon, the order will be six. So here we have to do some mistakes so that you realize when will, uh, when uh, what is the correct one. I am in purpose doing some uh, mistakes like that. Let's see here uh, this question. Steve found that uh, hubcaps shown below at his local junkyard, determine whether each hubcap has rotational symmetry. It's very clear that this one has, this one has, this one has. OK, the order will be different here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here, uh, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Order of symmetry here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the order will be different, but Yes, they have. They are not asking you to find the order. The figure shows the uh, Union Jack, which is the flag of the United Kingdom. Does the flag have rotational symmetry? This is a rectangle referring to the math. Yes, it has 
rectangle. It's a rectangle. And the order is two because the magnitude is 360 over two, which is 180 degrees. And it's very clear that every 180 degrees, the flag will come back to this original shape. Um, a waste management company offers recycling program for its client. Recycling is donated by this symbol. This is the recycle symbol. Does the recycle symbol have rotational symmetry? Oh, yes, it has rotational symmetry. It has point of symmetry uh, as well. No, let's see. Yes, it has rotational symmetry. The order is three. The magnitude is 360 over 3, which is 120 degrees. Every 120 degrees, it comes back. This is like equilateral triangle, by the way. It is very similar to the equilateral triangle. Okay, this is a shell. Uh, Annabelle and her family went to beach for vacation. While she was on the beach, uh, she collected seashells. Does the seashell shown have rotational symmetry? Of course, you can see very clear it has line symmetry by the way it can have line symmetry but rotational are you going to rotate it uh, for example 180 degrees to come back no it will be different so now no, doesn't have rotational symmetry okay now the question will uh, does it have also uh, rotational if symmetry we can uh, locate also the center of symmetry this is the, the center of symmetry yes here it has rotation of symmetry. The order is three. The magnitude is 360 over three, which is 120 degrees. By the way, this case can be mentally done yeah, the point of symmetry here. OK, here, uh, yes, it has a rotation of symmetry. The order is eight. You can count and you can find them. Eight magnitude is 360 over eight, which is 45 degrees. Number three, S letter. You can see that after 180 degrees, it comes back to the original position. So yes, and the order is two. The magnitude is 360 over two, which is 180 degrees. This does not have rotational symmetry. This is letter H. Referring to the figure, draw the lines of symmetry. Lines of symmetry here, it's not rotational, remember. This is one of the lines of the symmetry, yes. This cuts the shape into two congruent parts. And we can see that this is another line of symmetry here coming at the middle. Yes, this is another line. So we have two lines of symmetry. Locate the center of symmetry of the figure. So we can see that this is the center of symmetry. What is the order of the, and the magnitude of the symmetry of the figure? Remember, it's rotational. When you are asked about the order and the magnitude, so we are thinking about uh, the angle of rotation. So if you rotate this letter H, for example, 90 degrees, it will become like that. So it's not coming back to the original position. Another 90 degrees, it come back to it come back to the original position. Three, uh, 270, it is like that. 360, it is like this. So if you think about it here, you will find that after uh, uh, each 180 degrees, it comes back to the original position. So order is two and the magnitude is 180 degrees. So, and this is coming from 360 over two, which is 180 degrees. A uh, regular polygon has magnitude of, uh, so a regular polygon has rotational symmetry, rotational symmetry with an order of five and magnitude of 72. What is the figure? Since rotational is five, rotational symmetry is five and the magnitude is 72, then, then it is definitely a pentagon. James says that this figure has only line symmetry. Other one, Jewel, says that this figure has only rotational symmetry. Is either of them correct? Explain. Okay, let's see here. Does it have line symmetry? Yes, it has line symmetry. If you uh, pass this line here, it cuts the shape into two congruent parts, as well as this line, as well as this line, as well as this line. So this shape has four lines of symmetry. This is regarding that symmetry. So we have here four 
lines of symmetry. Or, or it's called reflectional symmetry. Okay, let's see the rotational symmetry now. Rotational symmetry. If you rotate this shape, if you rotate, lower uh, shape, lift the shape. So if you rotate it 90 degrees, it will come back to the original position. Another 90 degrees, it will come back to the original position. So you can repeat this process four times. So the order of rotation here is four, and the magnitude is 360 over four, which is 90 degrees as we have expected. That means is it has rotational symmetry as well. That means neither Jim nor Joel are correct. Both of them are uh, wrong, uh, have wrong answers. So the answer is neither, because this shape has both rotational and line symmetry. So uh, that means that some shapes has only line symmetry, have lines of symmetry only or rotational symmetry only or they can have both or they can have neither neither we have passed by examples with neither line symmetry nor rotational symmetry i hope now the lesson is clear and uh, thank you for watching